So that whole Lisa McPherson thing happens. But as a result of that, something interesting happens, which is that, and this is my own take. This is my own subjective take on this. It's not, you know, like this is formally written down somewhere or something. But I noticed that this point when Lisa McPherson went down, I was now a Sea Org member. I was in the Sea Org and I was overseeing the, the delivery of Dynetics and Scientology across the entire Western United States. Lisa McPherson thing was Eastern United States. So I didn't have any privy, I wasn't privy or knowledgeable about any of that stuff that went down on Lisa McPherson at all when I was in. I had no knowledge of it. Um, but I was seeing, I was overseeing the delivery of Dynetics and Scientology in the Western United States. And, and it was noticeable that from this point forward, there wasn't really a whole lot of stress being put anymore on auditing, on the counseling. Now, that's the big moneymaker for Scientology in terms of high-cost services. So it wasn't like they just neglected it altogether. There was never an order to stop selling auditing or don't put any attention on it or stop delivering it. There was never anything like that. But the emphasis from the top, which is where we got all of our orders from, right? Miscavige would issue orders and directions, and this would filter down through the various levels and echelons of Scientology. There's a whole management structure in place. We never listened to, you know, the only the only time you heard David Miscavige talk directly was at the events. It wasn't like he'd come in the room and give you orders. He, he was many echelons above where I was at. So his orders would filter down, though, and the and the emphasis was always on the donations, the IAS donations, make money, just straight money. And that's where all the emphasis was put. So you didn't have to say or order, stop selling auditing. You just stop emphasizing it. And that's and, and that was a distinct change, for, at least from my point of view, in, in the emphasis of Scientology from the point of Lisa McPherson on. I think David Miscavige looked at that whole incident as a warning that Scientology counseling could have dangerous repercussions on somebody's mental state. And I don't think he ever wanted to be in a position where he was going to be potentially, you know, indicted for murder or negligent homicide or whatever the charges would have been. So he started de-emphasizing the auditing side of Scientology and started emphasizing buildings and donations and war chest and just giving us money because we're saving the world instead of give us money for services, you see. And, and he then did a whole republication and repackaging of all of the materials of Dynetics and Scientology. And he released a bunch of new lectures that had never seen the light of day from Hubbard before, from the 1950s. And he made a big, big production through the early 2000s and into the, into the late 2000s of, um, of, of everybody needs to read all these books and listen to all these lectures. And that's where the emphasis needs to be. And, and so that's where Scientologists started putting their attention is on those things and on getting big. He started a whole new program in the early 2000s to renovate, to purchase and renovate big church buildings for every, to replace out every single city office, city level church all over the planet. And there were about 140, 130 to 140 something churches. So this was going to be a years and years long project that he launched to get all these purchased, to get, to get new buildings purchased and then renovate them. And the fundraising that was getting done for this, it wasn't going to be paid by Scientology International. It was going to be paid for by the parishioners of each of the different areas. So they were going to fundraise. And this has been what Scientology has been doing for the last 20, eh, 19 certainly for the last 15 years, at least, right, um, is just straight fundraising for these buildings and, and renovating them. And that's been the big push. How does that benefit David Miscavige and uh, real estate let's just say the financial portfolio? What's that? Right. It's real estate holdings. Yeah. It's, it's property valuation, right? The, the, the real estate value of Scientology going up and up and up, which gives it more uh, buying power. 
Uh, it also services tax exemption because you have to take as a nonprofit charity or religious organization, you have to show that the money you're receiving is being reinvested back into the organization. You can't just sit on it. They don't let you do that. You've got to, you got to do certain things. There's certain hoops you have to jump through. Accumulating wealth is not the purpose of a charitable religious organization. So if that's what you're doing, the IRS is going to look at you a little funny. So that, that when back when they made their agreement in 93, they said there were certain projects they were working on that they were going to be spending a lot of money on. And they have fulfilled that part of the agreement because the one thing, the one thing, David Miscavige is more death on, is more like concerned about than anything else except his own personal physical safety, of course, is keeping that tax exemption in place. If the Church of Scientology loses its tax exemption, it's going to be game over within a couple of years. So, because they just don't have the money to be able to keep the operation going the way that it's going if they don't have tax exemption. And, and there's there are other legal ramifications of that. If they lose tax exemption, then their religious status could be threatened. They could have to start paying minimum wage to people. I mean, there's all kinds of things that could roll out as a result of that. So, so it's very, very important that they hold on to their tax exemption. So David Miscavige will make absolutely sure that everything the church does is done in such a way that the IRS will be happy with them. He doesn't have a lot to worry about right now, though, because the IRS doesn't, give, doesn't really care at all about Scientology. You were about to swear again. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I try to. I, it's funny that I control myself on that. But anyway. Um, okay. So he's got to. Can, can I just draw a parallel really quick? Oh, yeah. Yeah, please. 